Okay, here we are, folks. Uh, we are in Shooter's Pool, and we're just going to look at uh, one major uh, feature on the most recent update that we've had in the game. The update that we've had has uh, made some changes to the user interface to the HUD in the game. Uh, they've listened to what some of the guys have said. Certainly, I know that the um, in-game HUD, a lot of the text on it is very small, so the score... Uh, the scores on the screen and everything has been made larger. That's one of the features. They've tweaked the uh, physics a little bit in the game. But to get to the point, get to the major update that's in this uh, latest one, when you go to Shooter's Pool uh, website, you have, uh, you're have you logged in, obviously. Uh, you have a play option. Now, n up until recently, you had join a match and create a match. So if you're going to join a match, you would look at the matches that are listed and you can also click on the room and see what players are in it. The other one, uh, of course, is create a match. You can set the game type, the rules, the table, the room, everything like that. But the most recent update and additional feature is create a tournament, which is unusual, certainly. Um, and I actually asked uh, Jorge, uh, one of the guys that's the developers of the game, to double check that this was going to be available to us, and he said yes. So this is a tournament uh, configuration screen. Uh, you can name your tournament and you can uh, set how this tournament will start. So the start method can either be set, uh, sit and go or a regular tournament and obviously you then probably need to set it at a specific time. Uh, you have the elimination uh, format, which is uh, single, uh, double. Uh, I don't know what European double elimination means. I'd need to ask him that as well, but that's one option it's there. Then you've got the option for the minimum players and the maximum players, and you can then set up to 64 players uh, minimum, which is obviously huge. Uh, maximum you can set to 64. Um, the entry fee, you can set the entry fee for the tournament. Uh, what does that mean there? I don't know what that means. Well that's a uh, virtual coin, that's what it is. So you can set the entry fee to whatever amount you want and you can, now let me see, this VC account will be retrieved from your wallet and added to the tournament total prize. Now that's one important thing so that you understand what we're talking about. The added VC credits here, uh, for example, if I wanted to, I could put in 500 added VC coins. Uh, that 500 coins is going to come out of my own wallet and go towards the tournament. Um, down here, you have a commission. Now, on this basis, it's a, a percentage commission, and you will receive this uh, virtual coin percentage of the total entry fees. So obviously that depends on how many you get signed up to your tournament, but you'll get a cut of the pot. Um, you've then got minimum ranking, uh, the restriction limits. You've got rookies only, obviously, uh, amateur, professional, or world class, and maximum rank is likewise. Uh, then you have the maximum player's wallet. Now that's a curious one, but if you actually go over the little box, it tells you players with more uh, virtual coin credits in their wallets than specified in this field won't be able to participate. So that's one way of restricting somebody if they've got a lot of money. Um, then you have the option for the assistances. You can put aiming lines on for players ranked below amateur. Uh, you can have straight shooting for players ranked below professional or you can have disable aiming view angle restriction for players ranked below professional. Uh, you would check each box accordingly. Then you've got the game type and then you can go into specific rule options which uh, if you then choose the game type it then drops down you've got all the options available depending on what game it is. Then the amount of games, or whether it's games and sets, so it could be uh, the best of three sets and a race to five games each set, if you wanted to do that. You've got the start break policy, 
which would be player one, player two, lag or random or the highest rating or the lowest rating. And break policy uh, can be alternative break, winner break or loser break. Then you've got the timer settings. You know what that is. You set a 30 second shot clock, the available extensions uh, and also the time for the, uh, the extension. And you can also check the box to save extensions between turns. Uh, then the other option is the table type. Now the table type you're going to be limited to be dependent on what games you have in your own game. So remember each table in Shooter's Pool can be purchased individually. You'll have a basic table for each game but any other tables you'll have to buy them. So obviously depending on the tables you have in your stock will depend on how big your drop down is going to be. Uh, you've then got the cloth and that goes for the cloth as well. Uh, there are various cloths available and um, then you've got the quality or the newness of the cloth, uh, the dirt on it. You can send it down to brand new or put it up to used and so on. Then the ball sets again, uh, the standard ball sets and I think I presume that would change depending on what balls that you have purchased as well and also for the quality of the balls. Then you have um, the arenas available. Now I've only, as far as I know, I've only got the one or two. I thought I'd more than that, maybe not. But anyway, um, in a normal uh, tournament, I think the challenge arena, I'm not sure whether that's one that's available to us in normal play or just tournaments only. But anyway, that's how you would set a tournament. And then you would hit create. And then um, when you go to... Uh, let me see again, go to, uh, now where's the tournament thing went to, that's curious, wait a minute, I'll get my head around this a minute, join a match, that's what you do, you go to join a match, then you go to tournaments, and then your tournament will be showing up there on the list, um, now the obvious thing with this feature is, it's a very good feature, um, the one thing is though that because we don't have a chat lobby as such a visible chat lobby you have a chat lobby here which is a sort of um temporary setup and uh nobody appears in it half the time at the moment um but that's where you would obviously try and gather up an amount of people uh, who want to play in a specific tournament until there's an open lobby then the tournament uh, that you set here probably won't get a lot of interest. Now I can see there's a lot of tournaments set there. My assumption is they've all been set by the developers. Um, I wouldn't think that there's any tournaments here that's been set, uh, been set by any other players. Presumably they've, they've had a look at the, the tournament option that's available. So as I say, just to recover, uh, recap, sorry, um, the new drop down at the top now has the new feature of create a tournament in Shooter's Pool. So that's something new to online pool games. Uh, I've never seen that in any other online games. Uh, certainly not the most popular ones I've played over the years. But uh, we'll see whether that remains as a feature in Shooter's Pool. And with that, it's a quick hello and a quick goodbye. And we'll see you again sometime.